right. I'm going to make another update to 131. I think I'm going to add some imposters in. So here's my code from the first part of the video. I actually added all the other tasks in there. So if I run it right now, hey, look, Draplet's not slow for me right now. Amazing. So I actually changed it so that I have, I'm up here in my configuration. I have three tasks left. And now it says you have blank task left because I figure you should tell how many people how many tasks. Now every room has a task, so I can choose anything. So now I can go to shields for H. You go to shields, you prime the shields, two tasks left. Now I go to, let's say, navigation. Go to navigation, you fix the wires. All right. You have one tasks. Oh, I should change that to task, not tasks. Ooh, okay. Uh -huh, where do I go? Storage, right? Let's go to storage. This, oh, S was not, what? Why did it say that? I probably did like a random space or something in there. You went to storage, you empty the garbage, you win. So I'm going to change this in here to be if asks left equal one, equal one, print, you have one ask left else print you have this tasks left there you go that's one way to make it work or you could probably have just done different things with the text in here but i don't care there we go you have one task left yep that looks good so what i want to do this time why does it say a comment configuration stuff that's kind of weird Okay, I don't care. All right, so a few, one thing I learned, um, people were trying to do loops earlier, and I've added this to my notes for Python, how to use something called continue, all right? So continue is a lot like break, and we learned break, I think, in a previous lesson in one, two, two. The break was about how you kind of, you're in a loop, and you can break out of that loop early, like you're in a for loop or while loop, right? I think we use that in the clicker thing to say, or to the, when you want to do like your top scores, there's a way to calculate that. I want to show you how to use continue. So sometimes in a loop, maybe you like, you don't want to break out the loop, but you want to go back to the start and you're in the middle of the loop. Because people want to do that for the stories and like, how do you do this? Well, continue does that. So it's similar to break, where break gets you out of the loop completely. Continue will just instead just put you back to the top of the loop and do another check. So here's an example code that's really bad. If I run this, so this is good. Maybe I have like an infinite while loop, right? And I don't want it to ever just leave the while loop. It'll just keep looping here forever. So what this code will do is the if statement, like I, I don't, I'm not programming it too much. I have a continue in here. So when it hits this continue, it's just going to jump, boom, back up to the start. But if I do this elf, elif and do this break, this would just bump it out to like line 12 outside of the while loop. So that's the difference between using continue and break. They're both lowercase. And maybe you're trying to make an interactive story and that kind of helps you move, move around. There's no, if you're interested in other languages, sometimes there's something called a go to command where it says you can just say, go back to this spot in the code or go to this label or this line. Python doesn't have the go to's. So, and it's not always the best programming practice because that can get kind of hard to keep track of. But it even continues and break. I remember being told like, oh, those aren't great to use because if you want to, don't make a while loop that doesn't just behave, like that's a weird behavior in the middle of the loop, but it's okay. You can use it. All right, continue, break. There you go. I um, in this code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, and I, I just finished flushed out for things from last time. I want you to, I'm going to add the use of an imposter. So, the idea is the imposter, if I want to go to one of the rooms randomly, I, w I want them to say, oh, A, if there's an imposter, maybe there's a chance that the imposter kills you and the game, the game's just going to end if that happens. Because I don't care. Ah, we'll just end the game that way. So I want every time they go to a room, there's a chance of that happening. So first of all, I want to create a variable that keeps track of that chance. Because maybe that chance changes after you do more tasks or... It's something I want to increase or decrease later. So I'm going to add it to my configuration. So I'm going to say chance, chance of imposter. 
Oh, chance of. Uh, chance of imposter. I was saying chance of imposter. And maybe I'm going to make it 50, so 50%. Okay? So we're going to use this later. So every time someone cho chooses one of these rooms, we're going to add. Maybe, maybe I make that a separate function. So I'm going to add this maybe as a function. I kind of like doing that. So let's, let's do that. Can I just actually define a function right here? Defining imposter. Or maybe, no. You know what? Let's put it in here first. That's weird. I'm just going to put it directly in before I start making functions. Right? Uh, so if you you went to the storage. Okay. So I don't want to go to do this stuff right away. Like actually check the tasks. If someone goes to storage, they sh we should do a check for imposter. So, and then, oh, we're probably going to need to do like a random number generator. Right? So I'm going to have to import random. And I'm like, how do I do that again? Because I want it to be a chance that something happened. So we're going to import random as ran from one to one. Hey. And then I want to have a random. Ooh. So I have something called random integer. But I'm trying to use a decimal number. You know, it's weird. We never really dealt with like decimals. We've always dealt with integers, right? I mean, I guess, okay, you could have done some decimal things, but we never talked about, like, floats or doubles or different types of integers. Yes. Ugh. Um, you know what? So, since we never did in this class, and I know my random stuff that I learned was just integers, I'm going to just change these to integers. As a, Not going to go as a percentage, a decimal. I'm just going to say 50. Don't like that as a math teacher, but okay. So, I'm going to do a check. A check. If. If. Um, let's say chance of imposter. Let's say, so we're going to pick a random number between one and a hundred. So let's say, oh no, if let's just choose that random. Okay. Random number first. So random int start to end. That's how it works. Oh, you got to do rand. Just like that. So if, and we're going to go zero to 100. Probably better to 1 to 100. So let's say if that number, we want to say if they get killed, it's got to be like bigger than that. So if that's greater than chance of imposter, we're going to print. Oh, we should put that time sleep. Right there. Print. Um. An imposter kills you. And then time dot sleep. And then print. You lose. And then I want it to end the program. So one way you end the programs early is you can use something called return. I hope I did it in here, didn't I? Find return. I never do return. So when you're doing a function, if you just want the fun function to end early, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it in here. We can go return. This ends a function early. One, three, one, not curriculum. Art object. So it ends a function early. Something like that. So what I want to do is you lose and say return. Okay. So every time they go to storage, let's see if this works. It's a 50-50 chance. Let's try it right now. See if this works. Oh. I was thinking I was going to do this as a function, but we're not going to worry about it right now. Oh, 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 didn't I wasn't patient enough. There we go. Like every time I get some random error, I start getting these problems. Okay. Come on. 
come on, dude. All right, I'm running this in. Drink it instead. Run. No. There you go. Why'd that take so long? I want my my delays in there. I think I'm trying to upload. I'm on a hot spot right now. It's kind of weird. You know, if you want a hot spot, my my new house doesn't have internet yet. So to get a because they don't have a provider, like really, why do I have water? I need internet first. So you get this hot spot, and like online, like you get on your phone, hotspots usually capped at like forty gigs or thirty gigs. And like I teach, Zoom's like two gigs an hour. That's not going to work. There's these hotspots on like eBay that I think are okay. They're like gray, I don't know. I think they're like grandfathered plants. But so I got one of those. And so far, so good. But it's probably not as strong as, especially for uploading, as if I had a landline in. But there we go. So let's try this. Storage. You went to storage, an imposter kills you. Oh, cool. I died the first time. So And it disconnected. It killed me from the program. You, whatever message you want to say. I'm going to try running this again Let's to make sure it doesn't always get me. Yeah, I think it's just being slow because of that. So let's see. Okay. And oh, that the random integer actually should go less. Okay, so if I went to like ten, because I want that to be a low chance, and then. Oh, if this thing is less than that, I want an imposter. Yeah, so I should have that. So double think those that logic. I mean, 50-50, it didn't matter before. It's like either way. But yeah, so ideally, I take this to 10, and then I'm waiting for this. You have three tasks left. Where do you go? Storage. I get an imposter right now. There you go. Didn't. Now, I'm going to keep going to storage, even though there's no tasks. And eventually... I wish you couldn't type in before that. Eventually, I think an imposter will get me. Ten percent chance. Oh boy, ten percent. Oh, okay, I I still believe. Oh, really? How how many is this going to be? 10% chance. Chance, it doesn't matter. If you're watching, you can fast forward. Fast forward at this point. I still think it's... Oh, seriously? I mean, 10% is pretty low. What are the chances of this? Find out how many. We'll do a math lesson after this. So when you keep missing a 10% like this, you think, oh, it must be bugged. I don't think it is. Unless, no, because it shouldn't, it should go to this logic first. Seriously? Oh, there we go. Okay, it took me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33 times. So what's that? 33 times. What are the odds? 90% you saved. 
the 33rd power. What's that? Pull the calculator up. 0.9. The X button button. Where is it? This is a fancy calculator. Scientific. 0.9 to the 33rd. 3% chance. Yep. Or 32 would have been more accurate, but whatever. Or something like that. That's fine. That can happen. So it works. Instead of 25. Maybe I want to do it every time they do a task. It takes, I can add things like it takes longer. Maybe a chance of the imposter goes up every time. So like every time you do a task, maybe it goes up by 10 points or doubles. Whatever you want to do. I don't know. So there you go. That adds the imposter. I will add that to everything. Now, another thing here, maybe I want to make that a function because I started doing that. I kind of do. It's like Because this is going to be repeated code everywhere. So, like, what if I want to change how this code works with the imposters? I only have to do it at one spot, especially because I maybe I want to make an animation for this later. So I'm actually going to take this code, and then we're going to say we're going to call this the define imposter check. Okay. Oh, so the problem is. Can I make it exit the program? I think I can make it quit the program instead. Is it quit a command like that? Yeah, I think it is. Can we learn that right here? We just make it end the program early. Oh, that's another way of doing that. Yeah, there we go. So I am going to. Wait. Oh, I just did it in there. So I'm going to do it in. No, let's just do it over here. I'll copy it over. Imposter check. So I'm going to make it quit the program. So if that imposter kills you, you lose. Quit the program, right? That should work. Then I can just call imposter check every time. And then that should work. And then let's say the chance is 25 this time. Make sure it works. Okay, so I'm going to try this. S. Ooh, doesn't like that. Oh, because you have to pull this in, you remember? Um, if you want to use this variable, or, oh, you know, oh, because it's defined in this function, duh. So I could just do imposter check. I could do. I could, okay, so I can make these like a global variable instead of in this function. Okay, but I'm going to just do chance of impostor. I'm just going to pull it in like that. There. Good thing I tested. Maybe I make those global variables so I don't have to like write these long lines. I feel that's kind of weird. But I, I'm kind of avoiding global variables because I'm defining a function. I don't want to have like some variables that are global. I'm just going to do it this way. So now I try this. And there. I'm going to keep trying. An imposter kills you. Perfect. It happens. It works. So there I go. So now I can just copy and paste this to each one of these. Put these checks in here. And that will be it. Wait. Nope. Nope. Not that quick. So that's how it works. I will update that, but that's it, guys. Thank you.